All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We have the last uh, lecture, lecture number two of unit four. Uh, little things to watch for in this unit is why the war is moving south. Why is that important for the British, more important than the Americans? Uh, number two, uh, how, we, how and why we know Benedict Arnold, uh, looking at the Battle of Yorktown and the idea of America. Uh, the Treaty of Paris, it's important information about that and the impacts overall of the American Revolution. So here we go. Uh, looking first with the war moving west, the end of the war, the war moving west and to the sea and to the south. Uh, looking at this moving, the war itself is taking place in the Ohio River Valley as well, not just in Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. So you have the British trying to recruit Indians in the backcountry, in the frontier, hoping that the British would buy in, or the British would kind of convince the Indians that the Americans winning the war would be a bad thing and that the Americans would want to take all the land away from the Indians, whereas the king had given the land in the proclamation of 1763 to the Indians and kept it for them. So the Indians, if anything, most of the time the Indians chose not to be part of this. If the Indians did choose a side, usually they did choose the British instead of the Americans. Uh, you have an American soldier painted there at the front over here, or actually at the top right. His name is George Rogers Clark. He's from Virginia, where General Washington is from. Uh, he's fighting in the frontier, fighting in the Ohio River Valley to kick out the British and the Indians from those forts used in the French and Indian War. Uh, his tactics, like it says over here, some of the things that he liked to do just to scare off people from their forts was to send a boat, an empty boat, full of crates to the fort, the next fort down the river. And when they'd open these crates, it was like Christmas morning, except the crates were full of body parts of people that he had hacked up, whether it's Indians or British people. So you'd find like different uniforms of soldiers that he had captured or killed and body parts to kind of scare those people into leaving their forts. Uh, another thing showing you why America is sometimes not that great, uh, the story of a guy named David Zeisberger, who was a missionary, and he was in Ohio actually helping a group of Indians called the Delaware Indians. And here in Ohio, they had a mission set up to try to convert those Indians to... Uh, the, the religion of Christianity, and in came the American army, the Continental Army, and they wipe out the Delaware Indians. They kill all the men, women, and children. Zeisberger actually escapes, or Zeisberger escapes, but the Delaware Indians are pretty much massacred, whether they were elderly kids, it didn't matter. They, they killed everybody, thinking that the Indians were part of the war movement for the British. Uh, the war over at sea really kind of at the beginning of the war the Americans had no navy whatsoever so the British kind of controlled the oceans and rivers and anywhere else they could get water wise uh, as the war goes on the Americans are starting to get privateers to kind of help out and the privateers are actually helping America by donating in a way their boats now back then if you owned a boat you really weren't using it during the time of war the British kind of choked out America or kind of had a blockade going so if you had a boat that wasn't being used or just sitting in a port, you rented it to the government or gave it to the government as a privateer. And in return, they would give you maybe money or let you be part of the boat or let you be captain on the boat. Now, to easy, easy enough, you would just put some cannons on the boat, put an American flag on it, and lo and behold, you have a boat for the Navy. Now, our key hero for America is a guy named John Paul Jones. And his boat, the Bonhomme Richard, defeats the British boat, the Serapis. There's a famous painting of it. The two boats, when fighting his boat, the American boat, is actually sinking, and when they ask him to surrender, John Paul Jones' quote was, I have not yet begun the fight. It's kind of that idea like your little brother or sister when you're beating them up, and even though you've won, they're bleeding, a tooth is knocked out, you're getting yelled at. You try to keep, you try to keep like pushing them away, and they keep coming after you no matter what you're doing to them. It's that American idea that we're going to keep fighting no matter what. And lo and behold, John Paul Jones and his boat actually capture the British boat, the Serapis, and take their boat back to American ports. Uh, the war moves to the south in the end of the war. Actually, in 1778, the British tried to move their men to the south where they have more support. The British had loyalist support. A third of the colonists were actually loyalist. Their lives were fine with or without the war, so they just chose, hey, our lives are fine, why change it? So the loyalists actually would help the British fight or join the revolution cause for them. They would actually join the British and fight as Redcoat soldiers. So the British were hoping that as the war shifted to the south, they'd get more support and start to win there, building a bigger army to kind of move them to the north. Uh, Francis Marion is one of our key guys for America. He's known as the Swamp Fox. He used guerrilla style fighting, kind of like black ops soldiers or kind of like any kind of video game you could think about today. Um, 
he was known as the Swamp Fox. He would be hiding out in swamps and in graveyards at nighttime. Him and his men moved during the night and would attack during the night or attack in the early morning hours when the British weren't ready. He'd only use a small group of soldiers, 30 or 40 like it says there. And they were tough to capture. He was actually based on, or his, his character in real life is based sort of on the uh, character in The Patriot, the movie with Mel Gibson in it. Um, we go to Benedict Arnold who prior to this had been an American hero. He had been one of the Green Mountain Boys helping out with Ethan Allen. And up until then, he was one of Washington's best soldiers, best generals. And he ends up marrying a loyalist wife. And his wife, like anybody else, likes to shop and likes to have money. And she kind of pushes Benedict saying that, you know, you're not making any money fighting for the American cause at all. The Americans can't pay you. So why don't you join the British? And she's actually pro-British. She's a loyalist. So she kind of pushes him into kind of making this move or surrendering his own. He is guarding or he is in charge of West Point, which is the, the American Army kind of arsenal slash training ground for America in New York. And he's in charge of that for the American army. And he actually tries to surrender it by writing a letter to the British saying, I'm going to keep this fort, you know, open for you guys and have my men not being ready for it. And I'm going to leave and then join you. And his message gets uh, intercepted by the American kind of counterintelligence. And they bring it back to George Washington, whose feelings are really hurt that his best soldier would do this and be a traitor. So just like LeBron James a few years ago in, in Cleveland, leaving and being considered a traitor, Benedict Arnold is considered the largest or biggest traitor in American history. Uh, moving on to the, one of the larger battles in the South is at Cowpens in South Carolina in January of 1781. And Nathaniel Green, our American hero there, kind of wins and pushes back the British into Virginia, where they're kind of stationed. Now there's paintings on the bottom. Now this war is going on for five or six years now. And as the war moves on for the British, it's costing them tons of money. It's making them tired of fighting. They're fighting wars back in Europe as well, and it's costing the king lots of money, more than he wanted to spend. And it's just like the Rocky movies that are out there. Rocky gets beat up for 14 rounds out of 15, but in the 15th round, his opponent is so tired of fighting that they kind of give up, and Rocky has just enough left to win. So for the Americans, they're hoping that, you know, when the war broke out, they weren't ready to win. There was no way they were going to win this war. But now that the war is into its fifth and sixth year, it's looking like the Americans should and actually will win this war because the British are tired of fighting. They want to go home. They don't want to keep spending this money. It looks like it's almost better for them, money-wise, to stop the war and let America be independent. So Americans do one more thing, they get more recruits, they create a pension system, which is a retirement plan, basically saying that when and if you retire, if you fought for so long, based on how long you fought and what you did, you would get paid money for that. So jobs today, many jobs today have a pension with the same idea that as you work for so long, you tuck some money away so that when you do retire, you still have some of that money that you earned throughout your job to pay you back. So even though you're retired, you're making still money for what you had earned while you worked. Now, the last major battle is the Battle of Yorktown, Virginia, in the summer of 1781. Uh, Cornwallis, the general for the South, and his men, he has 8,500 men and supplies. They've kind of been trapped in this area of Virginia by Washington, his army, a couple other different American continental armies. The French now for the Navy have blocked Cornwallis by the sea by, with, a name, with a commander named Rochambeau. And you have the basically nowhere for Cornwallis to go. And Cornwallis' only idea is either he can fight and lose his men or end up dying, or he can retreat, nowhere really, or he could surrender. And basically he takes the idea of surrendering on October 19th of 1781. He surrenders his entire army, 8,000 men. And there's no exchange of swords. So in the gentleman war idea where the men meet and exchange swords saying, well, you were better than me and I get your sword, Cornwallis is so embarrassed that he lost to the Americans. He lost to basically British people who were fighting against him like terrorists. That he actually tries to escape and leaves and goes back to England embarrassed that, at what had happened. And Washington waits and here's the, paint, the famous painting of you know, the British redcoat soldiers showing up to exchange the sword of Cornwallis. And Washington won't sink down to that level and, ex and accept the sword. So he sends one of his regular soldiers as well to accept the sword from the British soldier. Uh, moving on now to the treaty. The, the battle's over. The war's over. They have to write a treaty. Now, the treaty is not signed and okayed until 1783. It takes them two years to meet at a compromise. And a compromise is where both sides, or in this case, all three sides, including France and even Spain is there, to agree on these things. So again, the British lost to themselves, and they're very embarrassed by this. They don't want to give up much, really, because the Americans really didn't gain new ground. They just want a country. <clears throat> so at the end of it, 
What does America get? America gets. They are first independent and free. They are a new country. Their borders are Canada, the Great Lakes, and they go all the way down to Florida, which the Spanish run. <clears throat> we go to the Mississippi River. So America is basically the same exact size that we were after the French and Indian War. We haven't gained anything new. But it is our American land now, and it's ours to to lead. It's ours now. It's our job now to go start to create a government that will work with us. Even though that government's been put in place during the war, now that we're officially a country, though, we have to make an official government. America's allowed to fish off the Canadian coast. Hooray for all of that. Um, we are also, the Americans have to give back the land to the loyalists that were stolen. Now that we're a country, American or not, if you're living in America, you get your land back. Now, the three men for us that went there to do this were Ben Franklin, John Jay, and John Adams. These two men, John Jay and John Adams, will be important for George Washington once he gets elected president in the future, whereas Ben Franklin's pretty much getting into his 80s and he's kind of old. But these three men are very important to America that we send them to negotiate this compromise for three or actually almost three years. Now, the impacts of the revolution politically. America is free and independent. We are a free country that can trade with anyone. We can do whatever we want. We are on our own. It's our job now to start creating this great idea of government that we're going to come up with. And it's our idea with our founding fathers, those men in Philadelphia, to come up with or craft a great idea of how our government's going to work since we broke away from the monarchy that we had. Uh, each state creates its own constitution with their own Bill of Rights. So you right now, at least at the end of the war, have 13 different states or 13 different kind of mini countries working together as America. Uh, economically, we've opened up the West for settlement. People can move over the Appalachian Mountains. It's no longer Indian land. It's American land, whether the Indians are there or not. The Americans are going to take it. And they look at that as a do giant dollar sign for them as they move west as to new farmland for them. Uh, we also end restriction on trade. America can trade with anyone openly for the highest bidder. So people want our tobacco and our crops that are grown in the south, and we will sell it to the highest bidder, whatever country that may be, which turns out to be Great Britain. Socially, all states except three separate church and state in their government, showing again that America is open to all types of religion. We don't have just one. We accept everyone. And slavery becomes a major issue socially in America. Slaves in the North, most of the slaves who were fighting in the North, and there weren't many, but the slaves in the North were kind of freed if they did serve in the war. Uh, in the South, slavery is still a huge thing. They need that for their plantation economy. So we start to, as we look towards this idea of forming a government, there's going to be a major rift in between the North and the South. Now looking at other three other important people, Betsy Ross is famous at the time for making or creating an American flag that she gives to or sells to George Washington, which has the 13, star, or 13 stars in the circle and 13 red and white stripes. Uh, Nathan Hale is executed as an American spy, and before he dies, his quote is, I only regret that I have one life to live for my country, showing, again, that, that American idea of independence, that he was willing to give his life for this movement. And last, James Armistead, who worked as a slave. He was a slave working for Marquis de Lafayette. And he actually became a slave for the British when the British were living here in America, setting up camps. And, you know, every couple of weeks he would leave and come back to Lafayette to give him information based on what the British were going to do. All right, now that we are all done, looking at the CCFA, there are your questions. Why did the English want to move the war down to the south? Why did that, how did that benefit them? Analyze the question of Benedict Arnold. Is he a traitor or a hero for the war? That's up to you. Uh, describe the importance of the Battle of Yorktown. Look at why did the Treaty of Paris take three years to write? And lastly, why do you think, or what do you think is the most important impact of the American Revolutionary War? And again, make sure when you're writing your answers to this, explain why your impact or your version of any of those things is the most important reason. Thank you for watching, everyone. You get everything today. Golf class.